Okay. Hey, I wanted to pop on real quick. All right, I got a, a class coming up and I got something important because the question that I want to put in front of you, and I want to put it in front of you in this kind of sensational way for a reason. There's a reason behind what I'm doing and the way I'm phrasing this because I want you to think about something very, very, very important. 12 years ago, I did something that totally changed my life changed everything about the way I, I thought about who I was, what I could do. And it enabled me to do so much in my life that quite frankly, I, I, you know, as a dude from a trailer park, you know, I was still living in the trailer park. I didn't think it was possible. And, and that's, and it, there's so much more that you can do so much more than you think. If you change the way you think and if you open yourself up to more possibilities. And so one of the things that I did 12 years ago, totally changed my life. I took a ZBrush class. I literally took one ZBrush class with Meets Meyer and that one class and all the hard work I put into it prepared, laid the groundwork for what I've been able to achieve today. And I've shifted what I want to share with people from just that one thing that I used to do to now I want to share with people how you do all of that. Like, how do you build this kind of bulletproof career? And it goes beyond any one piece of software per se. It comes down to this very specific thing because what I did 12 years ago, yes, I took a ZBrush class. But it's not about ZBrush, you know? It's not about any piece of software. What I did 12 years ago was I took some ability within myself and I matched that with a shift that was happening inside of this industry, inside of the film and games, inside of some industry. And it's that thing that changed my life and gave me the power to live the way I do today. And that's what I want to share with you today. Because if you check out the screen here, right, you'll see if you go to gameartinstitute.com forward slash substance, it'll take you right here to this class with Arvind Villapandu. And in there, we've got our webinar. The webinar is going to be at Wednesday, 10 a.m. We're going to talk about this. But the reason why I'm focused on substance and I'm focused on getting people training in this program is because this is the shift that is happening in the industry. This is the important thing that's happening. And so I'm going to share with you a little diagram here in a moment to kind of frame this conversation with you so that you know how to create a bulletproof career because creating a bulletproof career is all about being ahead being where the, as you know, Wayne Gretzky says, being where the puck is going to be, not where it used to be, right? Because if you're going to be out, uh, if you're going to be a digital sculptor today, let's just say you're like, I love sculpting. This is what I want to do. And imagine, and I'm imagining if I was coming into this today, what would I do? Would I, would I be focused on this program? And you know, it's got beautiful marketing. They're great people behind it, but would I focus there? You know, I probably would because the truth is I got super, super, super lucky. I didn't really realize and put all the pieces together until later. I got lucky. But I'll tell you exactly what happened, what would happen because I see it happen all the time. You come in, you focus on this thing. It's your passion project. You devote years to this and you spend your time putting your energy, your life on hold as you build the skills so you can compete in a marketplace that's now crowded. Just go to ZBrush Central. You go to ZBrush Central and you see image, and they're all awesome images, but you, you see like, you know, five posts, five comments, right? Because now the bar is so high there. You can post an awesome image, an, just a beautiful image over there at ZBrush Central and you'll get like zero posts, zero comments. Because the bar is so high. The competition is so incredibly high, but when I started working in ZBrush, it wasn't that high. You know, I, I was able to go from where I was and excel to where I was because I just made less lumpy models than everybody else, right? 
And they're like, how'd you get it so not lumpy? And I'd be like, well, you know, because I'm traditionally trained. Right. You know, <laughs> but the truth is that I had some skill in something and I was just ahead of everybody else. And so here's the deal. Because, you know, I get it. We, we're artists. We do what we, what we feel passionate about, what we feel like it, we feel it from inside. But here's the deal. Okay, especially if you're in a situation like I was in where I had a kid coming and I had free, I just had freelance work and I was a freelance teacher and that was a little dicey. If you want to bulletproof your career, you need to be ahead of the curve. You need to be where the puck's going to be. Let me show you this image. Okay, this is what I really want you guys to see. Mm, where's the thing? Yes. All right, so in my influencer method course I do over at ryankingsline.com, I have this thing I call brand maps, okay? But it's built around this one idea. And the one idea is that here you are, and this is all your awesome. These are your skills, your mindset, uh, your talents, right? Your um, interests, you know, all of that. And then here are customers, per se. And over here are, or there's industries, right? Depending on how you're thinking about this, you know, because you could be, for example, uh, you could be an employee. And if you're an employee, in my opinion, you're also running a business. So you also have a customer. The customer is your boss, right? Or it could be, depending on, you know, the enterprise you're dealing with, it could be somebody in the enterprise that you're trying to get a connection with so that you can move to another team or you can start working on better IP, you know, whatever it is. You've got a customer. And as we think about this and how you build this career, you got to think about your skills, your interests, and all the things that are focused on. And then you think about what that customer needs. What does your boss need? What does that one person need, that luminary? What does your industry need? And then you look for where those overlap. And where those overlap, that's your strength, right? If you can provide in that some aspect of power, then you're able to, you know, produce a living, right? But things really go nuclear when you mix all of this with a trend or a shift. And that's what I did because right in here, this, that area, that's your bulletproof zone. That's where you can totally change your relationship with your industry because that's where you are being valuable to people where they need it the most. And so if we were looking at my particular category, let me zoom in so you can see these a little bit better. If we look at what I did, right? There, that should be a little bit easier for you to see. Okay, I, I was a digital, I'm a sculptor. You know, truth is I draw, I paint, you know, I do all of that. I'm classically trained, uh, sort of, uh, and, I, and I have a wide repertoire of abilities and I'm also CG trained, right? But then at the, at, at the same time, there's the game industry, um, there's VFX, you know, and VFX needs people who are CG and it needs people with some art skills, right? To be able to create things. So there's jobs like modelers, right? And in, he, in here, there was also riggers. And in here, there's also animators, right? In here where artists and the game industry meet are a whole bunch of different jobs. But what I did was I took a shift or a trend you know, it depends on how you think of the word trend. And in this particular case, it was the rise of digital sculpting, which was a massive shift in the industry. And that was coming up. And I said, okay, well, over here, there's this digital sculptor. And in here, you know, in this whole area, I can be a modeler. I, could, I, start, I did some animation. I did some rigging, some scripting and all of that. But I decided, and I, you know, like I said, I got lucky. I, got, I decided, hey, I'm going to be this digital sculptor because there's this cool thing happening here. What I didn't realize was how impactful that was going to be. Because there are people, like, for example, I remember the story of um, one of my teachers who, you know, let's say 
one day he discovers ZBrush and he's like, oh my God, I love this program. I got to learn this. And he tells everybody on his team, he's got this team of like nine, 10 other sculptors. And he's like, you guys all got to learn this, man. This is going to, this is the future. He's the only one that learned it. Nine months later, every single other sculptor was let go. Every traditional sculptor gone, let go their job over. Right. And maybe they got a job somewhere else and, and practical effects is coming back, you know, which is amazing and, and super powerful, super awesome. You know, and now things have come full circle where a lot of the digital sculpting jobs now they're in other countries and they're done at different rates and they're different. You know, there's a million different things happening now in digital sculpting. But back then it was the bee's knees. It was, nobody was doing it. So if you knew how to sculpt reasonably well, you know, and I'm not talking Zach Petrock, like Zach Petrock came out and he was like this sculpting God. I'm not talking about him. I'm saying if you just knew how to sculpt reasonably well, you had a job. And so I trained thousands of people how to get a job, just improving your anatomy, right? Just improving your capacity to digitally sculpt. It became so incredibly impactful and powerful for people to go out there and actually change their lives and going from working at Costco's, you know, like I did to, you know, running a business like I am now doing something that's kind of cool. And when you explain it to people, like I love going to back to school nights here in Laguna beach and it's all like real estate agents and, and business people and all this stuff. And they're like, what do you do? And I'm like, I, um, I, I train game artists and they're like, Oh, you mean what? And then they, and I'm like, yeah, we teach them how to digitally sculpt. And they're like, what, what? And then I explain what digital sculpting is. And they're like, what, what? They still don't get it. <laughs> you know, what we do is so crazy specialized and so crazy amazing. But here's the thing. Even though it's specialized out there for the real world, the competition has increased so dramatically, right? So I tell all, everybody to do this one thing now. I'm going to tell you what that one thing is, and you probably already know what that one thing is, but I tell them to do this one thing. But first, I'm going to head over into the comments, and I'm going to see if there's any questions, anything that I can answer for you guys, and just see uh, and make sure you can hear me, basically. Let's go into my videos. Great. All right, let me check in. Hey, Manuel, how are you doing? Sati Vijit, how are you? Sorry, I probably murdered your name there. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't, ar don't rip and rest in peace, ZBrush. You know, but the point is, and this is the important um, point for me. Okay. The question I pose in this is, is ZBrush dead? I sent out an email last night, is ZBrush dead? And the question's important because if you're looking to develop a career and have this kind of fast-tracked career, ZBrush is basically dead to you. That's not the path. I tell my boot campers this, I tell everybody this, learning how to digitally sculpt is important. It's a core, okay? It's a core tool, but it's like a company that matures. And when a company matures, you know, they start a form of dying. Like the Roman Empire, right? You know, it got so big and then it just started its decline. And, you know, I'm sure Pixelogic's going to pull something out. I'm sure they're going to do something amazing. But digital sculpting has risen. It has impacted 3D printing. It's impacted all of these different areas. But it's risen there's something else rising. And the question you have in front of you is, do you want to buy stock at the high of the market or do you want to buy stock at the low of the market and ride it up? Right, and I'm mixing metaphors for you here. But that's the dilemma that you face. Because in my opinion, the thing that got me successful is I started at the bottom and I rode the wave up. And if you do that, if you get in early, you're one of those early um, you know, adopters, as you grow and you rise, it's just, you get all these natural benefits that if I was starting my industry, starting my business again today, I'd have to work 10 times harder and I wouldn't be able to achieve what I've already achieved, you know, in my industry and in my ability to impact people's lives and, and help, right? Be of service as they say in, in, in my space. So what would I do today? Not ZBrush. No, if I was starting over today, there's only one thing I would do and that is substance. I would do substance designer and I'd do substance painter. And I don't care about the fact that I'm a sculptor and a painter because the truth is I am a sculptor. 
I am a painter, right? But I'm a father and I'm a husband. And so I, these guys aren't pawns for me to just go around and play with stuff. I'm looking, and you know, you might have a different perspective on this, but I'm looking for a way to take my interest in art and my desire to not be an accountant, which is causing problems in my business. <laughs> I should develop that desire to be an accountant. But my desire to be artistic and live life on my terms and bring that to a marketplace and create value for that marketplace because that's how you that's how you grow and that's how you you know that's how you create wealth you know all wealth is value in one way or another and that's how you just create stability and stability for me is the root of being free to be able to do the things that i want to do right so if i was starting over today if we looked at this here's me here's my art Here's the industries, games, VFX, right? And then VR, AR, and then movies and storytelling, which, you know, I have a degree in, you might not believe this, but my degree is actually around poetry. Yes, sir, I am a poet. Uh, and so, and then I have, you know, all of these abilities as art and poetry and digital stuff, CG and sculpting. These are all my interests. So there's a lot of things I could do in there. But the thing that's rising right now, PBR, substance, these are the things that are really rising and changing the way people think about how they can produce quality work. It's changing our capacity, right? And so in the olden days, and you know, we're going to have a webinar, so make sure you head over here. Uh, we're going to have a webinar tomorrow at 10 a.m. Let's make that red. Tomorrow, 10 a.m., just click this. It'll take you to a little go-to webinar link where you can register for this. That webinar, we're going to go over and we're going to talk about PBR and substance. We're going to explain it. We're going to open up Painter, and we're going to get in there and really give you some more in-depth Kind of explanation for it but one of the things that i want you to kind of put in your mind is that it used to be that zb was for um wrinkles clothing right who does that now that's marvelous marvelous designer does an unbelievable job of that it used to be that zb did skin pores and it used to do damage and concrete right like i remember creating concrete tutorials all of that is gone that is all substance now for the most part even in terms of skin when you do xyz and you do some of those amazing texture maps you can put a lot of that stuff you can put it in mari right mari and then you can bring it in you bring the maps into substance so you go in here into these different areas There used to be so much that you did. Scars. Scars now are in substance. Yeah, you can do this. Okay, clothing weave. Do you remember in the old days in ZBrush Central, clothing weave? You'd see in the sculpt. Used to be in ZBrush. No, now you do that stuff in substance. You know, there's some issues. There's some variations that you got to think about. Like, do you have enough polygons or do you have enough pixels? But so much has transitioned over in to substance and so you know I'm teaching this class but I'm not teaching this class because I want you to learn substance and just you know hey let's pick up another piece of software right you know if you followed me for a bit you know I'm kind of over the whole let's try this thing and you know I want to just teach the things that are going to impact you on a massive level so I only I teach my boot camps we've got our on demands you know so that you guys can still get access to all of our previous instructors and things like that but but the key thing that I want to be doing now is what can you do that shifts your life as quick as humanly possible? Not a year from now, but in three months. If there's something that shifts your life in three months, that's what I want to focus on. And it's obvious. Like I will teach a digital sculpting class because I still love that as a part of it. But I don't put a big focus on that because digital sculpting is not going to shift your life in three months. Great, you just joined the horde of 10,000 plus people that are all in the digital sculpting terrain. 
you learn Substance Designer. And I don't mean just learn it, right? Like you learn ZBrush, you learn it, but if you master that software, the way I mastered ZBrush, if you master it, you change, you know, what's possible. I mean, there, uh, there's people looking right now for substance designer, substance painter people, especially substance designer in this whole area of environment arts. That's totally new. Look dev concept is moving into this. There's all kinds of crazy things happening now that, you know, weren't happening just two years ago. Million things. And this is going to get farther and f this is just going to get more and more awesome for what substance can do. So I wanted to pop on and number one, tell you, hey, you know, head over here and check out the webinar. We're going to do it 10 p.m. And number two, hey, if you want to do something that's totally going to empower your career like this, this is 12 years ago. Let me see if, um, yeah, this is 12 years ago, right? This whole model of what I did, that shift, that trend of digital sculpting, that trend does not exist anymore. That's no longer a trend. Now you got to look for the other trends and you need to find this sweet spot because that's the place where you add the most value to your industry. That's what's going to really level you up. All right, let me take a look at this. Uh, Bernhard, the textural is indeed being replaced. You still need the block sculpt your primary secondary forms in ZBrush. Absolutely until photogrammetry but enough said about that ivan you depends on what you want in your career ivan ivan is asking should i stop doing sculpts and i tell my students this you know this is exactly what i tell them i say um i give them a timeline to do a sculpt and uh, so in the boot camp when we get into the character or the environment section they have a high resolution phase it's a week you know out of eight weeks it's a week and it can't go more than a week. I mean, maybe I'll give you like another half a week. You know, at the most, I'll give you another week. That's it. You know, if you're not done in that time period, it doesn't matter. Because you don't know what your model, what, your, what this thing is going to look like until you are in substance or in further down the pipeline in the texturing. But the problem, and this is why, this is the most important thing I want to get across to you, is that everybody focuses on digital sculpting. Stop focus on the sculpt. Stop focusing on it. You gotta, that's one eighth of your pipeline at the most. Get that thing done, take it all the way, get it into substance and you go from there. Heck, just look at the top row of Zebra Central. They're not featuring just digital sculpts anymore. They're featuring things that have been textured and have been put in game engines and have been completed. And ZBrush was a part of it. If you want to change your career, if you want to level up and, and kind of do something more than what you've got going on right now, yes, stop sculpting. Get your ass into Substance Designer, into Painter, and you make these things as beautiful as humanly possible. That's the most important thing for you to do, right? That's the thing that's going to move the needle. And, um, Thai, I can't pronounce your first name, so I'm just going to call you Thai. Uh, uh, what about AI? That's actually the next important element for you to consider. You know, but we're too, we're too ahead to discuss that. Kim, the ZBrush is plus Z Substance Painter is now the workflow for me. Sculpting plus texturing is like a marriage um, of forces. Agreed. Absolutely. All right, guys, I wanted to pop on and share this with you. I got to go into a webinar um, for my boot campers where we're actually going to explore substance. And, uh, and look at what uh, one of our uh, community members did for a freelance gig. It's a beautiful thing he did for a museum. Anyways, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about is ZBrush dead? How, uh, this conversation of ZBrush versus substance. If you hate this conversation, let me know. I don't care. Conflict is a fantastic thing for us to engage in. But I want to hear what your perspective is on this because in my view... In my view, we need to do a lot less digital sculpting. We need to get our butts in to Substance Painter and Designer, and that's where you're going to find the most stability for your career. And if I can get even one person 
to shift their mindset and stop this and come over here and that gives them a job that lasts for a year or two years instead of a freelance gig and that helps them take care of their kids take care of their family you know that's what we need that's all I need you know I just need one person to shift from this focus of just in this digital sculpting world to oh my god this is what I need to do and get that job in the game company or somewhere that's just gonna be more stable and give you more of a chance to grow. It's my only goal here. All right, so make sure you head over to uh, GameArtInstitute.com. Let me show you the screen. GameArtInstitute.com forward slash substance. Sign up for the webinar we're going to have tomorrow at 10 a.m. Let me know if you hate me for this. I'll talk to you later. All right, ciao.